Hello, my dear students. Welcome to this lecture. So in this lecture, we'll see how the major bridge construction is going to happen, right? So you might have seen a lot of bridges whenever you travel, isn't it? You might have seen a bridge something like this, but we never understood how the sequence of construction is going to happen. So in this lecture, we'll try to see the sequence of construction and let us say how we are supposed to understand this, right? Yeah. So, so this is, ex this is one of the existing bridge what they have, but since it is not more serviceable now, so what they have done is they have done the construction of this particular bridge. Okay. So this is a total length of a bridge, which is almost 55 meter and it falls under the major bridge because we know that if the length is less than eight meter, we call it as a culvert. If it is from eight to 30 meter, it comes under the minor bridge. And if it is beyond 30 meter up to 60 meter, we can call it as a major bridge, right? Yeah. So it is almost 55 meter of a length and this is a major bridge what we have. So this is a complete uh, plan. What is uh, shown to us? This, this is an approach slab if I try to zoom in. So this is an approach slab from where you make an entry. Beneath that we'll be having a M20 leveling course, which will act as a kind of a PCC for this. Then these are the abutment, right? So this is one abutment and this is a second abutment. The end parts, we call it as an abutment, whereas the interior part like this one, this, this and this, we call, we call it as a pier. And over that your slab is going to come. And then it's written here RCC M30 grade of deck slab. And then the handrail and the other things are going to come. And then they have mentioned like this is your raft foundation. They have given a raft foundation and then your all the pier are going to come. Uh, other than that, the spacing between the two pier, uh, pier that is a clear span is 10 meter, 10 meter, 10 meter and 10 meter. Great. So this is understood. Other than that, what they have mentioned is. So other than that, they have mentioned like what is the total earthquake quantity? It is almost 875 cubic meter, which comes out to be roughly 56 uh, trucks. The concrete required is 2020 cubic meter. Uh, steel required is almost 99.56, let us say 100 metric ton. Your stone aggregate is 1818. Sand is 1212. Railings of railings we measure in running meter, 132 running meter and painting we measure it in square meter, right? Great. Now this is how the work started. We'll start from here. So first what they did, uh, always remember, whenever you do construction of bridges, we're supposed to do the coffer dam. What is coffer dam? Because there's already a water existing here, isn't it? If you see here, if I show you on the one side, yeah, you can see it here. See, we have a water here. So directly I cannot start with the excavation of this particular bridge. There's, some, there's something called as coffer dam. What we do is we try to uh, create a barrier in between the river so that the water from this side doesn't flow here and water from this side doesn't flow here. So this barrier we are going to create and then we'll try to do the excavation there. So that is called as coffer dam, right? Otherwise it's pretty difficult for us to do the excavation and do the concreting here. So that is why I'll go back again. Yeah, so we'll start from here. So can you see it here? A center line of a bridge right side, you can see something written here, coffer dam. So what is this coffer dam? We have a river on this side and on this side, but they put lot of sand, I mean lot of mud here so that it is creating a barrier and now they will start with the excavation work. Now you can see this entire excavation has been done and once the excavation has been done, next we'll try to do the PCC, then the raft and all those things we are going to do. Again, all these are the quality checklist what we're supposed to follow. So you can see the thickness of PCC, whatever they are putting, they've written it here. Okay, great. So now we'll start with this. So once you're done with that, uh, we'll put a PCC. After the PCC, this is my raft foundation, you can see. This is my rough foundation and then this is a one end of my bridge. So this is my abutment part, whereas this is pier. This is also a pier. Then here also I have a pier and next to that we have a pier. Again, we have, since it's a rough foundation, two meshes are going to come. Like in a combined footing, what we put, we put bottom horizontal, bottom vertical. We keep a chair, then the top horizontal and top vertical. Same thing is your rough foundation. Okay. And then these are the reinforcement, what we are going to insert for the pier, which will come like this and a L will be given and which will be taken into the foundation. Even for the retaining wall and other things, we do the same thing. If it is a floating column, in the floating column also, we do the same thing. We put a column reinforcement into the beam. Same thing is here, okay, great. Then we start with the concreting of this, okay. So this is how the concreting will be done. Soon after the concreting and all, we started with the construction of these piers. So you can see, this is the end of uh, end of my bridge, which is the uh, abutment part. And then you can see a lot of piers has been constructed, isn't it? So a lot of piers has been constructed. Yeah. So after that, so this is another pier what we have. 
so this is a pier so in this way pier next next once you see when you're constructing this pier and all it is not in one single uh, stretch you are going to do the concreting we'll do it by layer by layer first we'll do this layer after that we'll come to this part okay we'll come to this part again the shuttering and all things will be done and then the concreting will happen of course you have to keep the cover blocks and all you can see how these people are doing it hmm? so in this way you are supposed to do it now this is a pier cap after that once this is done once we reach to this level we'll put a cap here you can see this part so this part you can see this is a pier cap what we are going to do hmm? so this is how the reinforcement will look for that and then after that we'll do the concreting of that got it so you're able to understand and then you can see a holes here right so these are a weep holes what we try to put because once you construct everything you have to do the backfilling of a soil so once you do the backfilling of a soil uh, what will happen in later in during a rainy season if there is a moisture which is trapped in your soil it has to go out isn't it otherwise if you don't allow the moisture to go out it will put additional pressure on this abutment and means it and once it puts us a um, once it puts the additional uh, forces on that again the cracks are going to develop so what we do we try to release that pressure so whatever water is there we try to release that so these are called as weep holes through this what will happen the water will try the water will try to release from there okay and these things will do at the time of casting whenever you are casting this uh, abutment okay what we do we insert a pvc pipe of 100 100 mm diameter and then we do the concreting of this got it and then of course the curing has to be done so in this way the curing will be done you can see that okay yeah so finally this has been casted now again what should be the height of this all these things will be mentioned in the drawing let me show you one or two drawings regarding this so this is that uh, complete uh, you know uh, bridge uh, drawing what we have got and after this uh, this is a even the bar bending schedule has been done here yeah so even they have mentioned like which like i showed i i told you about the rough foundation isn't it so they have mentioned it here which diameter you are supposed to use you are you are making we are making use of 25 diameter bar and in the b part it is a 16 diameter 25 and 16 and then this a b c d they have mentioned it here like see this is my a part the top straight bar uh, and that uh, the distribution bar is b in the bottom your straight bar is c the distribution is d okay so in this way each and every way in uh, in between the two span or in between the two pier they have mentioned it so that according to that we are supposed to uh, do the reinforcement work for the rough and then the entire length and all these things are given this entire length of your bar is 59.03 meter this has to be 0.3 that is 300 mm and this is 300 mm the spacing is 79 in this way you can try to find the number of bar and the total length is how much 59.03 plus 0.3 plus 0.3 will give you 59.63 and the total length how you do 111 multiply this by 59.63 Six three. This will give you the total length. And how do you find the weight? Since we are using a twenty-five diameter bar, if you apply the formula of d square divided by one sixty-two point five, it gives me d square in the sense twenty-five square divided by one sixty-two point five. It gives me three point eight five. And now I want the total weight, isn't it? So six six one eight point nine three. If I multiply this by three point eight five, you can do it manually. You'll get two five four eight two point eight eight. So this much amount of steel is required. And finally, they have done the calculation for all, and they got almost. 63.50 metric ton got it so in this way the entire drawing is given and you can see it here also yeah so they're given it here what should be the width and also the pier we had put so pier also they have mentioned this has to be 1.3 meter this has to be 1.3 meter got it so in this way each and everything they have mentioned it here i'll show you one more drawing It is here also. So this is 1.3 meter first layer. So in the second it is 1.0 meter. Okay. Got it. So in this way you are supposed to do the execution. Yeah. 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 Once this is done. Next what we are supposed to do. We are supposed to put a slab. So that is called as a deck slab. So what we try to do. We try to put a slab in this way. So from here to here, from this distance to this distance, one slab will come. From here to here, another slab will come. So that is my first slab, which I call it as a deck slab. So for that, we are supposed to do the staging. So in this way, the staging will be done so that you can keep your centering plates over there. So you can see it, no? how these things are done. In this way, all the I sections and uh, C, C channels will be kept so that it can take the centering plates over that. 
and accordingly like for the slab we do the centering the same thing you have to follow it uh, here so in this way we are supposed and they have kept like 600 mm that is roughly two feet okay so in this way you will arrange all the centering plates and in this way what will happen your entire uh, deck slab uh, centering is ready so once this is done next what we are supposed to do we are supposed to lay the polythene sheet and then the rebar will be placed why the polythene sheet will be placed because again there is a gap in between your centering plates isn't it if you don't do that what will happen the cement slurry will pass and that may result in honeycombs and all in order to avoid that we put a polythene sheets and then we try to keep the reinforcement for that so it's all a 25 diameter bar uh, again we'll be having a two meshes that is bottom then we keep a chair and then the top mesh so you can see it here how the bars has been placed a kind of a crank bar like we do it for the slab the same thing has been done here okay in this way they have done all these things okay great so again the center to center spacing how much it has to be kept so they have kept uh, somewhere close to six inches which comes out to be 150 mm so in this way all the bars will be placed first in the shorter i mean in the direction of the movement of the vehicle and then of course the distribution bar will be placed here so you can see the distribution bar also placed so these are my distribution bar got it yeah so these are my distribution bar right so in this way and then once the bottom is done we will keep a chair now we know we know what is chair and all isn't it so in the chair will be kept so in this way the chair has been kept and then the marking will be done so that you can put the top reinforcement so what we do wherever the chair has been kept we will try to provide the top reinforcement in this direction see the chair was kept here isn't it so i have put a top bar in this way okay we'll try to keep similarly here also we'll try to keep it okay got it so in this way we are supposed to do it everywhere you can see it here so once that is done both our bottom mesh is done chair we have kept the top is also done and then finally you have to uh, do the shuttering so that you can pour the concrete into that okay great this much is understood so the complete uh, uh, shuttering we have finished then then these are the uh, sprout pipes what we try to put so that uh, once this uh, bridge is open to the traffic whatever water comes that has to drain off from there right so that is why this pipe will be inserted now later we'll cut it off from here and then this particular beam is put also so that uh, it will act as a railing you know the, the railing will be put on both the side so in order to uh, keep the railings we try to put these beams also in the corner area but of course the concreting will be done only to this level okay the concreting will be done only to this level this level this excess portion will be there we'll try to see that excess portion so you can see finally everywhere has been done next we started with the concreting so this is how the concreting will happen okay and once the concreting is done next day we started with the curing of this okay you can see the curing so i explained you for one slab in the same way there are three to four different spans right abutment pier 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 and the abutment so everywhere you are going to do the same process okay then again you have to take it out this is called as deshattering so after how many days you'll do at least you'll wait for 20 to 25 days because it's a huge span what we have so minimum 25 to 30 days you're supposed to wait then you shift all this material to the other span and do the same activity over there now you can see it here see this is where the uh, this was abutment and this was my abutment cap here isn't it okay now you see here this was the concrete what i had casted and the access portion you can see the reinforcement still it is seen so this will be later utilized and a beam will be put and then the railings are going to be fixed in that portion okay great so you can see uh, both the slabs are done slab one is done slab two is done so again this side also we have done another slab this and this is left out so this and this is left out for this also we are going to do so in this way the entire uh, bridge will be uh, constructed so you can see it now so once this is done now you see the difference so whatever this portion we had no we'll put a shuttering here okay and then this concreting will be done you can see how this concreting has been done see the concreting has been done so while you're doing a concreting you're supposed to insert this column rebar like we do it for the floating column isn't it the same thing is done here and next we'll do the same thing on the right side also okay yeah in this way we are going to do that and finally once that is done this is how it looks okay you see it here this is how it looks okay and now you see the difference up to here we did not allow the water the water was still here the left side the right side water was still here once all your uh, bridge is complete almost all the part is done okay then what we need we allow the water to pass now this becomes my now this is a bridge what i have so you can see the water is passing from the 
upstream level to the downstream level got it so this is what we had constructed and this is how the entire bridge will be constructed then these railings will be put up okay these are the columns what we casted and then these are the beams what we have put got it so in this way the entire bridge construction will be done now you see this backfilling we have done got it and these are the holes what we have given here and this is the approach slab so you can see a slab here this particular thing this much area this much area what we have here so it's the approach slab what we try to put okay again for approach slab there is a drawing which i already shown you i'll go back to the drawing again So this is that portion okay after the abutment this is my abutment isn't it this much portion whatever i have it's called as rcc approach slab the same thing you can see it practically here so this is your rcc approach slab this much area okay and then all the backfilling will be done and this is how your uh, you know entire uh, bridge is going to look got it so all these things has been explained in my new course which i have launched it recently by the name construction methodology in civil engineering advanced where you are going to get the i have explained you for the major bridge i have covered major bridge culvert minor bridge uh, then also the uh, ma uh, minor bridge with the uh, i i shape uh, girders and all so you can see the entire course details here we'll be learning about the water tank construction petrol bunk construction bridge engineering fundamentals and types of bridges has been co covered culvert and major bridge box type minor bridge and deck slab Along with this, I have explained you the practical videos also, the step-by-step -step construction. Then the miscellaneous topics I have covered you about uh, metro construction, u girder. Then uh, along with that, we have also covered a lot of things from building point of view, like what is uh, a work methodology for excavation, soling, form work, reinforcement and all. And also I have taken uh, care of the quality assurance plan and also the industrial flooring, that is a trimix flooring, how it has to be done, that is explained. And then the site management topics, okay. This one, and this is not the actual cost of the course. The cost of the course is uh, usually 499 rupees or sometimes it is 440 rupees. You can uh, download download my Civil Brains app. So there's a, I'll, I'll be giving a link in the description. So go and download this uh, app by name Civil Brains. You can even buy it from Udemy, not a problem. Just you have to message me on this number. Okay. This is my WhatsApp number. You can message me for the coupons. You can get the same course for 450 or 500 rupees. Okay. So along with that, there are a lot, lot other courses. If you're watching my lecture for a very first time, there are almost more than 20, uh, more than 12 to 13 paid courses. This is a very basic course. What I have construction methodology. Then you can go with my quantity surveying and estimation course is an internship course is a diploma in basics of civil engineering course is a course completely on concrete technology there's a complete um, wonderful course on drawing reading and construction uh, and architectural drawing reading like expert there's a course on etaps there's a course on uh, interview preparation for the freshers and there are many other courses uh, which are almost best seller on udemy platform okay advanced uh, architecture and structural drawing courses and along with that uh, we have a course on uh, 75 days internship also which is also going to help you a lot and then in the fundamentals, I have covered you about the what is bearings, what are the different technical terms used in bridge engineering and all. So this is how it is. All the course about I've explained you all these things uh, through a more practical way, like what are the different types of bridges and all. Great. Yeah. So I hope you have enjoyed my lecture. If you are really like this lecture, don't subscribe the channel. There are many other videos what is put up on my channel. Go and watch all those lectures so that you get a lot and lot of knowledge from here. So we'll see you in the next course. And also the description is given below. Uh, try to download my Civil Brains app. You can have a look about all, all, all of my courses on Udemy platform. And if you're interested to buy them, uh, you can buy, buy them. And you get a 30 days money back guarantee for all of my courses. If you don't like that, you can take your money back. So we'll see you in other lecture. Thank you.